Hi, this is me, Heisha Chima, and joining me yet again here at E-Times Lifestyle is Janvi Chetalia. And today, we are going to be talking about the importance of gut for our skin. Is that right, Janvi? Absolutely. Janvi, we all know that you're a gut specialist, mm -hmm. and we've spoken to you about so many things in mm -hmm. our previous series, right? This one is different and special because skin and girls and even boys, right? Now, yeah. We're very, very particular about it, right? Could you please throw some light on the importance of gut and what role does gut play as far as our skin is concerned? Great. So, um, yes, absolutely. First of all, I think we're coming to realize that the skin and the gut are really very closely related. I want to start with a very simple statement that says that a bad skin is actually an indicator of what is going on in your gut and it's a real true barometer of how effectively your gut is functioning or not because your skin is actually your largest immune organ of the body. So like we know that 70% of our immune system lies in our gut but skin is actually the largest we can see it's obviously we have skin all over that obviously you know makes our skin the largest immune organ so if anything that's going wrong in the gut will find its reflection back on the skin in some way or the other. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly why it's very, very important to ensure that your gut health is okay if you want to have a great, healthy, glowing and clear skin. So that's extremely important. Also, a lot of times people find that, you know, when they feel like, say, for example, a very simple example that when they're constipated mm -hmm. or when they feel like they're not having regular bubbles, I would like to also come in here and say that constipation is just not about not going at all, but not going satisfactorily mm -hmm. or feeling like you're creating a lot of, you know, gas or indigestion or, you know, kind of byproducts or metabolites, which are not you know the foul smelling and other things as well or having a lot of acid reflux mm -hmm. all of these also play a role on your skin as well so often when people come and say okay i'm getting like these you know red bumps on my cheeks or i'm getting heat boils i'm getting heat rashes all of these are also a part of what happens to the gut okay. you know and when the gut is not okay and that shows up on the skin so, so the, is that the case with acne as well so acne has a probably a bi-dimensional sort of an effect when it comes to your gut it's also related to your gut and your hormones mm -hmm. so it could be the heat and it could also be your estrogen progesterone imbalances or when you're looking at maybe sometimes high prolactin or high insulin also do have other factors which play in as well along with yeah. the gut also discoloration becomes a very important factor which is related to insulin resistance mm -hmm. a lot of people say that okay we've kind of got black patches around our neck or they find like there's you know darkening of the skin pigmentation all of these are also related back to inflammation and the gut so that's also another aspect a very interesting aspect Aisha I'd like to talk about is autoimmune conditions mm -hmm. so we work a lot with autoimmune conditions on a day-to-day -day basis I see people who have psoriasis people who have lichen planus, people who have bullous pempigoid, many other atopic dermatitis, all of these, some people, we're still figuring whether eczema also comes under the bracket of a 100% autoimmune condition. But all of these are becoming very common in children, adults, everybody, you know, we're hearing that more and more. And also, yeah. I'm, I'm sure that we all are seeing that, you know, people are going to dermats for these issues as well and all of that. So they have really increased in the last four to five years because our food intolerances have increased. Mm -hmm. So apart from just indigestion of, you know, the system and that causing a different kind of a symptomatology, also food intolerances like, you know, intolerance to sugar, intolerance to gluten, intolerance to dairy, even intolerance to things like nightshades, which are like your brinjal, mm -hmm. peppers, um, or even citrus fruits, you know, things like that, or even things like uh, lentils for that matter. Which were all at some point considered healthy. Absolutely. And people were, you know, people just used to eat these staple foods. Like our grandparents have eaten that all their life, mm -hmm. right? So, but today a lot of people are developing intolerances to those foods. And when they do eat them, they tend to see an inflammation in the gut. And out of that, they actually see that over a period of time when it's chronic, they see all these symptoms showing up on the skin. So that is inflammation of the skin. When you mm -hmm. see psoriasis, you see flaky skin or you see redness or patches or you, take, you feel like irritated patches where you feel like you need to itch all the time. All of these are also related to having gut inflammation. Okay. So I think just, yes, it's important that you have your skin treated, you take topical creams, but it's the root cause if you want to get to, it's your gut. So if you just keep applying steroidal creams on it to ensure that it doesn't flare up or irritate you, that's only 50% of the job done. 
Mm-hmm. It's going to keep coming back till you don't change the environment or terrain of your gut. Mm-hmm. And that is why adding probiotics, adding the right kind of acidophilus, plantarum, uh, root tree, rhamnosus, gg, all of these are amazing probiotic strains that can help you with you know your skin as well. Also, it can be uh, that when you're adding things like maybe you're adding bone broths that can help uh, improve your leaky gut. Or you're having things like, you know, I mean, simple things like having like sabja to cool your body down mm-hmm. or having soft to cool your body down. When there's a lot of heat or acid reflux, mm-hmm. all of these can also help. And it's important that you figure what your food intolerance is. So when you figure what food actually causes you a flare up is what you need to determine. Because for each person, it could be a different reaction. Okay. So once you determine that this food typically leads to inflammation and that leads to inflammation on the skin and you see a pattern, mm. that's what you want to kind of go behind and try to incorporate other substitutes for those foods, you know, like even for milk. Like yeah. So a lot of people are actually intolerant to milk, almond milk, oat milk. So maybe mm-hmm. then they need to look at maybe, okay, they can have a coconut milk or maybe yeah. they can have something else, you know, yeah, so like an alternate, to alternate to that. So and I think I just want to add here also, we've spoken in depth about what is food intolerance and food allergies. So yes. I would highly recommend you guys to actually go back to that particular video yes. and understand what we are referring to when, you know, Janvi says food intolerance, you know, so absolutely. Yeah. And last but not the least, I would say even when there is so much inflammation, so having like turmeric, pepper, coconut oil, um, or having some ginger, which is also very, very potent anti-inflammatory mm-hmm. compounds. You could have some amount of, there's a supplement which is uh, great in terms of, say, there's zinc picolinate, mm-hmm. which is great for people who have acne. There is also quercetin. For a lot of people who have allergic-related, you know, rashes and stuff, there's quercetin with bromelain, which is also a very excellent form of like a natural plant histamine Mm -hmm. which also helps to reduce the allergic or the kind of component in the foods that we're eating and how it comes up on the skin as well is great vitamin e and omega are great again for the skin because a lot of people because of all of these factors have a lot of dryness Mm -hmm. You know, and dryness causes further itching as well. So these are some of the things that I really recommend people to add. But before that, really diagnose, try to understand what your condition is. And if you have a repeated bout of something or the other, be it even acne or be it even heat boils, you need to look further because something is trying to tell you something about whatever is happening in your system. And you know, that's what. So if you want a great skin and you want to feel good about it, I think first we need to start looking within. And I think the answers are all lying inside. So, uh, Janvi, is there any particular method or a process that you know you diagnose hmm. that okay there is a problem related in your gut which is leading to skin concerns? Sure. So, I think number one is really to take a detailed history hmm. because I've realized over a period of time with so many years of looking at gut you know clients over a period of time who have skin related issues there is a pattern. And there are specific patterns like every time somebody eats a food that they are intolerant to there is a flare up in the next maybe six hours eight hours Mm -hmm. ten hours maybe even after 24 hours so the idea is to take obviously a three-day journal or whatever to understand what they're eating Uh, then obviously run certain tests there are also tests which are like you have an ANA test to look at autoimmune conditions you have your IG, IgG which are also your food allergy intolerance you have your inflammation markers to see the inflammation is high so there is there is a process where you take the history then you do the test so that you understand that and also then on the basis of that you kind of come around to understanding what the issue. situation yeah what the issue is and then sort it out mm-hmm. obviously i would definitely recommend people go to a dermat because it's dermats are great with that as well they're great at diagnosing what's wrong and once you know if you have an autoimmune condition treat it by using the five step r process that i use which is to remove the foods which are irritating the system replacing it with the right kind of foods then adding the probiotics prebiotics digestive enzymes to kind of start resetting the gut and also then, you know, kind of helping with rebalancing your system by adding the right kind of things to repair your gut lining and then reintroducing the foods back that were troubling you in the start. And then see if your skin tolerates them well or not. Okay. You know, just eliminating people, just eliminate foods and add them back. Mm. That's not the way it's done. Mm. Because then you're just touching the surface of the, the problem issue. issue. Exactly. So that is the way that we, so we get to the root of the problem so that a long-term resolution so that comes up and you don't have to be dependent on external medication and creams all the time as a continuous chronic process to keep going back to a solution.